Hey guys, it's Jessie and I'm back at my parents' house in my very messy room and I'm going to be bringing you a review of Invincible Summer. <clears throat> As probably many of you know, hopefully all of you know, this is my favorite book in the entire world. I've read this book nine times. Um, this last time for the review was actually my ninth time reading it. Um, and I'm actually hanging out with Hannah, the author of this book, later today. The author of this book is Hannah Moskowitz, who I host a podcast called The LOL Word with. Um, I actually first read this book when I was like 12 or 13. Um, I read it as a galley, so right before it was published, and I just fell in love with it. It takes place at Bethany Beach, which is in Delaware, and it's like... I don't know, two miles away from the beach that I go to, which is Rehoboth Beach. So it's very sentimental for me. I usually read this book at the beach, um, and I usually cry, and then this time I didn't read it at the beach, so it's a little weird. Hannah is amazing. She actually wrote this book before she was even in college, which is kind of funny because a lot of these things in this book relate to just being sort of disenchanted about college, which is great because college. So let me tell you what this book is about. Invincible Summer is about this family um, that basically falls apart over the course of four summers. The main character is a boy named Chase. It starts when he um, is like 14 um, and his birthday's in the summer so each year he turns another year old. So it's when he's 14, 15, 16, and 17 and he turns 18 in the book. It's it's really interesting because it's split up into the four summers that this book takes place in. So you have the first summer where you have the scene set of Chase, the main character, um, his older brother Noah, who is sort of a flight risk and he runs away a lot because he doesn't know how to deal with his emotions. Um, you have their younger sibling Gideon who is deaf and he is like five or six years old when the book starts. Um, and you have their sister, Claudia, who is, I think, 11 when the book starts, and the mom is pregnant with the fifth child in their family. Um, their parents sort of don't get along. They fight all the time, constantly. And so that is one of the elements of tension in the book. Um, and then you also have sort of like the growing pains of getting older. Um, and... At their beach house, they have these neighbors called the Hathaways. Um, the oldest girl is Melinda. She is, like, just so sexy and thin. Um, Hannah describes her as so thin that it looks like part of her ran away and the other half is about to go and find it. That's probably almost a direct quote because I can basically recite this book from memory at this point. But it's so good. I will always reread it. And then, uh... The Hathaways also have a younger set of twins that are Chase's age, Shannon and Bella. So each character sort of has their own thing. Gideon's is that he is deaf. Claudia's is that she is like super sex crazy, even though she's like a tiny baby. Um, Chase is that he wants to make his family stay together. And Noah's is that he can't handle the unresolved tension in their family and so he's always running away and causing more tension. What I like about this book is that not only is it like a family drama, but you don't realize you're getting swept up into the story. I think this is like, I know Hannah's gonna disagree with me. She doesn't think this is her best book. She thinks A History of Glitter and Blood is her best book. I need to reread that before I can say anything about it, but I think Invincible Summer is probably one of the most well-constructed books I've ever read, um, and other books that would be up there would be like Anna Karenina, which has been around for like over a century at this point. What I like about this book is that you have an internal struggle with Chase, with um, he's very sexually frustrated and emotionally he feels almost like alone in the universe, and then he finds solace with um, Camus, who Melinda introduces uh, Noah and Chase to Camus books, um, who, if you don't know, he is a existentialist from, like, early 19th century France. Somehow, Hannah managed to pick out, like, the pieces of this book, well, of these books, the essays that Camus has written, and The Stranger, and other books, and has managed to make it somehow 
not like splitting hairs. Um, I don't like Camus. I think he's really pretentious, and I think his books are really lame and really boring, and uh, none of the good lines really stuck out to me. I mean, The Stranger, I think the only part worth reading are the last two chapters. There's, like, a lot of family tragedy in this book, and a lot of just, like, growing up, and I feel like Chase and I grew up in a similar way, because I obviously have been reading this since I was 12, and every single time I come back to it, I find new things that I have needed to hear. Um, and so let me start off with my personal favorite quote from this book, um, which is something that I... It didn't really stick out to me the first time I read it. I was like, eh, whatever, and the second time, not really. Um, but after I had been in a sexually manipulative, potentially abusive relationship with my high school boyfriend, this line really, really stuck out to me, and I want you to hear it because it is one of my favorite lines and always sticks out to me. Chase has a kiss with Bella, who... Have they Everyone in the family sort of has, like, paired off with the Hathaways, so... Noah is with Melinda, Chase is supposed to be with Bella, and Shannon and um, Claudia are supposed to be together. Um, so, so Chase tells Noah that he kissed Bella, um, and he says, it was nice. God, God, really, it was nice? He sounds so earnest that I think for a moment that he's making fun of me. He props himself up on an elbow. God, I fucking miss when kisses were nice. I'm so jealous of young people of people young enough to still have nice kisses. Wait, kissing isn't nice anymore? No, it's foreplay. Trust me, you get old enough and everything is foreplay. Kissing is foreplay, talking is foreplay, holding hands is foreplay. I swear to God, Chase, I think at this point, sex would be foreplay. Um, and then later he says, sex is a to-do list where nothing gets crossed out. And I, it really, really has stuck with me because I've never sort of had... A sexual experience that I enjoyed. Um, and that's probably because of the relationship that I was in, but it felt like everything that we did together was going to lead to the bedroom. And I feel like Hannah has really captured that feeling of frustration um, that comes with having sex that I feel like often gets ignored. Um, Hannah now says that she may or may not be on the ace spectrum, and so I don't know if this is coming from those feelings. Um, and I also don't know what she was feeling when she was, like, 17 and writing this book. Clearly, I know a lot about my friend's life. Hmm. I mean, the book is also just, like, incredibly funny. It's... Ugh, like, I want everyone watching this video to go and buy this book now and read it. Um, I actually just bought myself a Kindle edition so I can read it when I'm abroad, because there's no way I'm taking my signed copy... Signed! and bringing it across the ocean where I'm probably gonna lose it. Like I mentioned, one of the things in the book is that Chase is really, like, attached to his family, and he hates when Noah runs away and things like that, and one of the great lines in this book is, um, then Noah laughs, they should have named you Stay. That's an ugly-ass name. It's just such a great line. It's such a great fucking line, and I think about it a lot. I mean, not as much as I think about the foreplay line, but... I mean, I feel like this book, every time I read it, is speaking to my soul. Um, there's a line uh, in, like, the, in 85 that says, Nothing's happened to me that can't be attributed to these summers. And I used to think that that wasn't true, but everything that matters to me is the freedom that I feel in the summer. Um, you know, the... Or the freedom that I felt that feels like summer. Um... You know, like, laying out on Shenley Plaza in Pittsburgh is a summer feeling. Um, you know, just, like, sweating balls is a summer feeling. Going to the beach is a summer feeling. My family used to go on week-long beach vacations at Rehoboth, and so that was always, like, a huge part of my summer. And I went to summer camp, and that was a huge part of my summer, which any Jewish American princess can tell you summer camp is the best. Um, and I feel like those moments of freedom and growth in the summertime have mattered so much more to me than anything that happens in the wintertime. Because, um, 
you know, summer depression is different than winter depression. And a lot of the times my winter depression was because of abusive people in my life. And summer was different. Summer was like this emptiness um, that is even referenced in this book. And I just want you all to feel what this feels like. Like knowing that there's a character out there that is living your life just with a different plot line. I mean, my family and my parents are still together. I only have one sibling. We do have 10 cats right now. So that might be a little bit like this book, but. And I just feel like there's so much insight in this book that people of all ages need, but especially people who are between the ages of like 13 and 25 can really get out of this book. Um, there's a really great line about um, uh, about college that Noah says and it goes don't ever let anyone tell you that college is for smart people College eats smart people alive and that's something that my friends and I quote a lot to each other because it is just such It's such a truth about college because college college sucks. I mean you guys know I hate being there but if I wasn't there, I wouldn't be getting anywhere that I want to be. So it's kind of, I have to sit through the suck to get to the good. Um, but, I mean, this is a five-star fucking book. I've read it so many times that I cannot express to you how important I think it is for anyone watching this video to read this book. And it's not because Hannah is my friend. Hannah became my friend because I read this book and fell in love with it and then found her on Twitter and then annoyed her into doing a podcast with me and um, begged her to get coffee with me last summer. It's fine. It's fine. Now we're friends. But this book... <sighs> Like, I don't know what to tell you. This book means the world to me. I, this book, every single page has something on it that is either funny or moving or just straight up truthful and insightful. And I feel like there's so much in this book that I'm missing in every other story that I've read this year. This book is so incredibly rich and I, I mean, this book should have been a fucking bestseller. It is incredible. It is better than most of the Harry Potter books, I'm telling you, and I love Harry Potter. It is right up there with Anna Karenina, which is my second favorite book to this. And like, I don't know what else to compare it with because it's so good and it's so different from everything else and it feels so original and genuine, especially because Hannah does spend some of her summers in Bethany. Um, <sighs> I mean, she doesn't have a big family like this, but it feels, these characters feel so real that when you're reading it, you don't realize you're getting wrapped up in their lives and their story. And then when the tragedies hit, it fucking hurts. I cry every time I read this book, except for this time, because I didn't read it at the beach. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's still so good, even reading it without the sensory experience of being on the sand, which I do think makes it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I can't recommend this book enough. This is my favorite book in the goddamn universe, and I don't think there's ever going to be anything that compares to it. Please, please go read it. Like, I know I don't usually say that for the other books that I've been reading for the queer book review. Um, and by the way, there's not really any queer characters. The sister Claudia is gay, which I know because I asked Hannah for clarification. Um, but Hannah is a queer author. She, she's queer. Sometimes she identifies as a lesbian. Sometimes it's bi. Most of the time it's queer because of the wiggle room. So in case anyone was curious, um, we'll probably read a lot of her books for this category because she's just, I think as far as queer people in any kind of spotlight go. Hannah is probably one of the best role models. Um, and I also think that she just has this perspective that I can really relate to because we grew up in a similar area where we're both Jewish, we're both queer. Um, and also the fact that I just really love her style. It's like a mix of... It's, it's like sometimes the style is a little similar to Beatniks with how she phrases sentences but it's also got this really, like, real feeling to it. It's not like you're watching, like, 
When you read Beatniks, it sometimes feels like everything is a manic pixie dream girl mixed with uh, an LSD trip, and this feels way more grounded than that, which is such a nice touch. Um, but it still has some of that wordplay that's really nice. The characters feel really full and rich. Um, I think Hannah is an amazing author, and I mean clearly, because this is my favorite book. And she deserves more credit, and she deserves more people reading her stuff, so please go read this book. Please go fund my friend, because she deserves it. I mean, she's really been not given the literary credit and acknowledgement that I think that she deserves. I mean, I know I didn't, I wasn't that much of a fan of Not Otherwise Specified, or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, Not Otherwise Specified. Um, I... I, the characters were still full-fledged and whatever, but there's just something different. And I think it might have to do with what period in her life Hannah was in when she wrote this book. But it is incredible, and I know I've been talking for the last five minutes telling you how good it is. I just want everyone to read this book. I think people who are in my life who read it then get this, like, sense of understanding of who I am and how I how I view the world, um, and I feel like people who don't know me who read this book, um, they just get this sense of catharsis that I think everyone needs. Um, so I cannot recommend this book enough. It's a five-star book. It is good enough for me to read nine times, and I read it every single summer, and I'll probably read it at least one or two more times this summer. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. This book is incredible. Hannah's an amazing author. Next month, we will be reading The Dyke and the Dybbuk, um, which I won't have a, you know, a handheld physical copy to show you guys, because I will be reading it on my Kindle, because I will be traveling. Um, but that should be up on time, because I it's summertime, and just because I have an internship doesn't mean I don't have time to read. So that is all. For this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.